item number four, and that is our public comment. And first, uh, Margaret <coughs> Keefe. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm Margaret Keefe. I live at 5980 Shore Boulevard South in Gulfport. And I'm here as a private citizen uh, because I've heard talk around Gulfport that this board allocated some funds and then withdrew the funds from where they allocated it. I think it has to do with the Uhuru uh, people. And it just sounds really ridiculous to me that you would do something like that. So I'm here to find out what actually happened. Because I've never heard of a board allocating funds and that they, they must have investigated, they must have looked at the people they were going to fund and then they allocated the fund and then find out later that that allocation was withdrawn. So I'd like to know if that's true and also where the funds were directed. Uh, can someone answer me now? Do you have an exchange? Or? What? This Mr. is public Burton. comment. This is public comment. So I, I don't think we get into, you usually don't get into We don't engage questions. in questions and answers during public comment of our meeting, but I would ask uh, Ms. Silverboard if you could just give this young lady the contact person for her to call once the meeting is over with and have a chat. How about that? Let's go. Although I would like to comment that if that was true, that um, I think it's an abomination to do that. You made a decision. People counted on the money and planned their lives that way and their organization, and then to have that withdrawn is just unconscionable. Thank you for your input. Please talk to Mrs. Silverborg right there. Um, okay. So. Johan jo Benningfield? Is there a Johan Benningfield? It's over here. Johan. Oh, here we go. Okay. Thank you. I did not see you. I apologize. Hello. Hello. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Hello, my name is Johan Bainfield. I live at 900 Night Avenue in Southwest, Lego. I'm a member of the Uber Saturday movie. I am here to condemn the vote to revoke the fund to the Black Power United States and demand you be free of all these funds. This was an attack on the freedom of speech and the black community, an attack on the democratic rights of the black community. This was an attack on an organization that has, not, has done nothing but uplift the African working class. This attack was baseless, <coughs> brought up by nothing but China and Santip. Okay. It is an attempt to silence the black working class and stop them from expressing our uh, opinion that differs from the opinion of the, our current government. You accept the, the support of the white community for this anti-democratic attack on the African group community, but you cannot count on us to be complicit with this assault on the freedom of speech. Black Power United States is a necessity that serves the black working class community as St. Petersburg and beyond. It uplifts the community and promotes unity based on economic development and social justice. Um, um, so I've, I've been um, to the Uphur House and I've seen what incredible 
Thank you, Johan. Thank you so much for your efforts and for being here today. Thank you. Uh, Elijah Jennings, do we have Elijah Jennings? He, oh, here we are. Oh, go. Yes. Okay. Good afternoon. Please state your name and your address for the record. Elisha Jennings, 925 Jackson Street South, or North, sorry. Thank you. I've been a St. Pete resident for as long as I can remember. I've gone to school through in Pinellas County all my life, ever since kindergarten. I went to Sexton Elementary, and then I went to Thurgood Marshall Middle School, St. Pete High, and then now I'm at St. Pete College. I've grown up here and witnessed the gentrification of my city ever since I was in middle school. Walking around, I could see things being demolished right before my eyes. Black Power 96 has been serving the black community for over half a decade now, providing vital public service announcements, news, and culture. I'm thankful and fortunate to be offered an opportunity at the radio station, sorry, um, as a programmer, uh, as a program engineer for Black Power 96. However, I'm not the first student to work at Black Power 96. A group of Gibbs High School students got their start there with a radio show called No Class. And now my comrade Aquan works for Nielsen uh, Media Group, which is a radio company. He's made it big, and I want to be able to do the same and see the same thing in my community. Thank you. Thank you so much for your comments. Alan Perry. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm Alan Perry. I live at 3601 Abington Avenue South, St. Petersburg, Florida. Uh, I'm a resident of St. Petersburg, Florida my whole life. I'm 52 years old. I was born and raised here. Um, there's been nobody like Black Power 96 in this city ever. Nobody has done for the community what this station does for the community. Speaking as a local artist and an author, this, this station, like, they took my material and they actually put it out with no hassle. They, they got it to the people, they got the word out to the community that I had a book that was uh, intentionally designed for incarcerated black men to help us overcome these obstacles. This station has, um, it just stood in the forefront for, for the black community and it's always been an eye opener. Um, it's a shame that they had to have these funds taken away from them after they had been granted. And uh, the station really needs it and the station can use it because it helps the community. And I just wanted to be here to voice that and to let this commission know that that money is very well needed and that money will be used to help the community because that's what they do. They help the community. And it may not be the way that other people want it to be, but it's there. And the gentrification is there, as it was spoke of. And without, you know, the Yahura House, I don't know what, like, black residents like myself will be doing, really, you know, to survive other than just get up, work a nine to five. But... Everybody has not built to work a nine to five. You know, I have businesses, and this station does help me get these businesses out. And I just wanted to be here to support this station and just to let this commission know that this is a great station. It's a great opportunity for young and upcoming people, and it provides a platform for the local artists to go out and find a way to earn a living off of their art. That's not offered here. That's never been offered here in St. Pete. And I've been a local artist since the 1996. And this station is the station that makes it happen. And I just wanted to say again to this commission that that money is very well needed. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking your time to come today and for your input. Thank you. Uh, Takara Waller. Takara.
Kara Waller. Do we? Is that online? Perhaps she's online. Do we know? No, that's not one of them. No? No. Uh, Jamie Simpson. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Thank you. Right here? Yeah. So uh, my name is Jamie Simpson. I'm a resident of St. Petersburg since 1989. I live at 1435 55th Street North in St. Petersburg, Florida, and I'm here to express my outrage at the vote to revoke the $36,800 grant that was very well deserved and needed to the African People's Education and Defense Fund for Black Power 96 Radio. I'm here to demand that you re-award these resources and cease these slanderous attacks against Black Power 96 and against the entire Uhuru movement. I'm a member of the Uhuru Solidarity Movement, an organization of white people created by and working under the leadership of the African People's Socialist Party that stands for reparations and solidarity with African liberation. I'm also the host of a show called Reparations in Action. Uh, I have the honor of being a volunteer host on Black Power 96. And this is a program of white solidarity with black power. It's also a program that tells the truth of the history of this system founded in uh, colonial, colonialism, slavery, and genocide. And I want to say I recognize that the Pinellas County Commission's vote to revoke the grant for this station is an attack on the democratic rights, including the supposed right to freedom of speech and, and a free press of the black community. Uh, it is clear from the statements of this body that the move to revoke these funds is based on nothing but slander and a, and a desire to punish the Uhura movement and the African working class for expressing opinions that differ from the opinions of the Pinellas County Commission. This body has to decide whether it supports freedom of speech or not for the black community. If this county respects freedom of speech, it must respect the right of the black community to express opinions which differ from the government's opinions. I recognize that this mostly white body expects the complicity, the agreement of the white community in this anti-democratic attack on Black Power 96, but I'm here to tell you that you cannot count on the support of the white community for this denial of free speech, this denial of education and of economic development for the African working class. I call on white people to challenge this decision, unite with the democratic rights of the black community and refuse to be complicit with the Pinellas County Commission's attempt to silence the black community. The APEDF and Black Power 96 have done nothing Nothing but work to uplift the black community at a time when its very existence is threatened by gentrification. And this station is absolutely a necessity for that community. And it is a station that provides education, PSAs, uh, health and weather alerts, uh, provides a platform for performing artists to get their music played and create economic development from the, the incredible artistic genius that abounds in the African community. At a time when African history is under assault in this county and <clears throat> state, and African authors are being removed from our schools, it is absolutely critical that we oppose this assault on Black Power 96 that is reckless and dangerous. And I want to finish by saying I'm an educator. I have met students who have been able to become artists that can hear their music played on Black Power 96, that know this station, that know how open it is to the community. I cannot express to you how much that means to a young person living in an oppressed and poor community to be able to be played on a local radio station that truly embraces them. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for being here very much. Eddie Maltzby. Good afternoon. All right. Good afternoon. All right. My name is Eddie Maltzby, Jr. I live at 1743 22nd Avenue South. I'm the station manager for Black Power 96.3 FM. I'm 100% blind because you saw someone brought me up here. And with that being said, I was singing downtown here in St. Petersburg, born and raised here. I was singing downtown for 35 years, started out at a store called McCrory's. Uh, in, in 2017, I heard of this station called Black Power 96.3 FM. It's about time for me to get off the streets singing for nickels and dimes. So I went to the station to see if I could be a DJ, and they allowed me to be a DJ, 100% blind, again, handicapped, 
and disabled. They allowed me to be station man assistant manager two years later. Two years after that, I became manager. This station does need, has a, a place in our community. It does help the minor minority uh, brothers like myself and the independent uh, cl working class people. I want to say also that the brother that just uh, spoke, Elijah, said that the brother came in at 17 years old. I was there, got a, a, got a uh, show there, and began to do his show for a couple of years, and now at Nearson Radio, which is a corporation which is one of the largest in the United States. This is a vital for, to keep a, a station like this going for the people can knock on the door and come in without a dollar a dime. Right now, our government, or your government, is in debate with student loans that are costing our United States trillions of dollars. Uh, Joe Biden wants to get rid of it. This company, Black Power 96.3 FM and the Education Defense Fund, we want those funds back. How can you give someone something and then take it back? And I heard a pastor just came up here saying something about God. If God gave Jesus for to save us and then give it back, we would all go to hell. At last, I want to say to the, this commission is that every time this is brought up to you, you sh should shamelessly hold your head. I'm 100% blind. Even a blind man can see that you have done an injustice. Even a blind man can see the cloud that is dirty ho holding over your head. Please m remove the cloud and make what's wrong right. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thank you, Eddie Maltzby, very much for being here. Janice Kant. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Janice Kant, 1245 18th Avenue South in St. Pete. The African People's Education and Defense Fund has served the black community of St. Petersburg for 29 years. I have been honored to provide administrative support for APDF for 25 of those years. The mission of APDF is to defend the human and civil rights of the African community and to create programs and institutions that address the grave disparities in health, education, economic development <coughs> faced by African people. APDF has been self-funded since its inception in 1994. The vital community programs have included a fitness gym, free HIV testing, gardening and financial literacy workshops, marketplaces for, for neighborhood vendors, family festivals, public forums, and a community meeting place with an events venue. The licensed kitchen is a unique resource for people to build local food businesses and nonprofits to prepare food for those in need. The grant which APDF applied for and was awarded last November is called the American Rescue Plan Act Nonprofit Capital Project Fund. Billions of dollars of federal grant funds are required to be used for equipment and structures. These grants were specifically designed for capital projects such as the emergency broadcast and disability access equipment that we were approved for. The 33 other nonprofit organization grants that you approved funded items such as transport vans, truck, forklift, furniture, computers, software, surveillance systems, and dental equipment. The ARPA grant money comes from all our tax dollars, including that of the black community. These funds do not belong to the county commission, and the purpose cannot be changed. For all of you to suddenly say that you now want to fund people over products is clearly a cover for your attempt to illegally deny APDF funds because of our association with the Uhuru Movement, which has stood up for the rights of the black community for over 50 years. Your vote to revoke the grant on February 14th was not announced, nor on a public agenda, and it's not even in the notes from the meeting. The community is outraged. The, this grant was awarded to APDF based on merit. Our application ranked fourth out of 55 with a 94% score. We met all the criteria. The black community deserves these resources and is tired of broken promises, secret votes, and take backs. We're pursuing all our options, including legal action against the commission for violating the federal grant rules, for violating sunshine laws, as well as for slander, libel, and false accusations. Your defamatory, derogatory, and unprofessional marks will not go unchallenged. Our application for the ARPA large grant capital projects is pending. Our intent letter was rated fourth of 60. 
The grant is for a building generator to allow the radio station and community commercial kitchen to operate and serve the community during emergencies. You will not stop these legitimately earned grant funds from going to APDF. We will not be set back. We are continuing the work of Black Power 96 and all APDF programs that benefit, protect, and defend the black community in St. Pete and elsewhere. African people have the right to self-determination. Thank you. Thank you. Akil Anai. Hello. Hello. <clears throat> My name is Akila Anai, born and raised in St. Petersburg, Florida, and I'm the director of media and communications for the Uhuru Movement. I'm here today as an outraged citizen of Pinellas County uh, because of the recent decision by this commission to revoke the ARPA grant funds previously awarded to the APF radio station WBPULP 96.3 FM, or famously known as Black Power 96. This vote came days after a commission meeting where commissioners slandered the Uhuru movement, making baseless claims and accusations. Latvala and Flowers spearheaded this attack, and the rest of the commission followed suit with the assertion that no organization affiliated with the Uhuru movement should be considered for funding. The Uhura movement, founded and led by Omali Eshetela, has served the historically oppressed and impoverished black community for over five decades, creating programs, institutions, and campaigns that defend the democratic rights of black people. This commission cannot say the same. When our people were in need of a community center, a health and wellness program, free HIV testing, youth sports and other recreation, cultural centers, educational institutions, the Uhura movement provided them. It has been this movement that has fought long and hard for genuine economic development and reparations to our community, something that at every turn the government has worked to intervene and put a stop to. The Uhuru movement took, the street, took to the streets to win black people to participate in the electoral process, registering first-time voters and even shuttling them to the polls. It has been this movement that has had the courage to stand up to expose the status quo and its agenda to keep the black community oppressed and exploited. It was our organization who didn't join in with the slander of our community when the police killed Tyron Lewis in 1996, a killing no different than that of George Floyd in 2020 or Tyree Nichols in January of this year. We organized the people to exercise their rights to freedom of speech and assembly to oppose these murders and the violence imposed on our people. I'm here to say that the commission's decision to take these resources away from APDF and Black Power 96 Radio is purely politically motivated. It has nothing to do with whether or not they believe a radio is of necessity. This is clearly an infringement upon the rights of black people as presumed citizens of the U.S. The fact is we have a different opinion and we're unafraid to express it, and because of this we are being punished. We don't have and have never agreed with, the, with Flowers or Latvala's dynasty or anyone else that has ever stood in the way of black people being able to achieve political and economic power over our lives. But whether or not Flowers, Latvala, and the rest of this commission likes the Uhuru movement is not what the grant was about. Those funds do not belong to any of the commissioners. They belong to the people. If democracy is under attack in this country, the Pinellas County Commission should be held responsible for attacking and criminalizing black people for exercising our rights to freedom of speech, freedom of association, and assembly. I want to further assert that this attack on a platform that gives rise to black voices, stories, businesses, and culture is no different than that which is being made by Ron DeSantis on black history and education, which we know some of the commissioners on here support. It's an attack we will not stand for. We demand these resources be re-awarded back to this radio station and for this commission to halt its slanderous attacks on the Uhuru movement, APDF, and the entire black community. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, How about Kitty Riley? Yes, I am here. Kitty Riley is here. <coughs> oh. Kitty Can Riley? Go ahead, go ahead then, Ms. Riley. All Thank right. you. All right. Thank you. I live at uh, 4101 West Florissant Avenue, St. Louis, Missouri, 63115. I have the honor of serving as the AP EDF Board Secretary and find it necessary to address the County Commission today. I was a resident homeowner of St. Petersburg for over 20 years. My daughter graduated from St. Pete High and the University <coughs> of South Florida, and I taught in the Pinellas County Schools. On my first visit to St. Petersburg, I was struck by the conditions of poverty on the south side, as opposed to the north side, where I had a home. I told my colleagues that it seemed like an underdeveloped country in the Caribbean. Houses were resting on cinder blocks as a foundation. There were no sidewalks throughout the black community, just sand. When going door to door, many families did not have air conditioning in the intense heat and humidity. 
Adults rode on bicycles as their main transportation. And buses ran infrequently, adding hours of daily travel time for the community to get back and forth to work, especially with the jobs available to them, mostly during off hours, split shifts, night shifts. Clearly, this is not the community the county commission serves. But APEDF does. APEDF has a track record of uplifting this community with programs, community-involved programs. We transformed the building at 1245 18th Avenue South, which was run down and dilapidated when first purchased. Even then, in modest circumstances, APEDF opened its first health program centered around a community gym that had measurable results in ridding the community of diabetes and hypertension. APDF kept going and after many years completed the renovation, resulting in producing a thriving community center, a community commercial kitchen, which broke economic embargo for the community by providing an affordable kitchen for economic development, entrepreneurship, all driven by African self-determination, and a community radio station, Black Power 96, that the county commission has intentionally intervened in its development. Black Power 96 radio station has the best blind DJ in Florida and perhaps in the country. You got to meet him, Eddie, DJ Eddie. And you cut off the funds awarded that awarded to Black Power 96 that were partly designated to make the ADA, the American Disabilities Act, work to give all people the needed equipment for a level playing field in the work environment. You want to take us back into the dark ages. Career thank, politicians thank have you, their Riley. own prejudices. Your time, is up, Your time man. is up, I'm sorry. Thank you for participating. How about Consuelo Mackey? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Right. Yes, hello. My name is Consuela Matthew Perry. I'm the owner and operator in the Grand Central District of Tabitha's Exquisite Touch at 1614 Central Avenue. And I am going to speak on the fact of the funding that was issued to Black Power 96.3, which is a community radio station that is a very um, advocacy for Black people, but people all over, not just in the city of St. Petersburg, Florida. The opportunity that Black Power has given my business and my our nonprofit organization has been a tremendous help. Back in August of 2022, when we did our Black Back to School um, organization, we gave kids free haircuts, school supplies, clothing, food, um, medical assistance, resources that normally they wouldn't have gotten. We went to about three or four different radio stations that would not air us and give us the support that Black Power gave us. With that being said, there was no funding that we was able to give to them because of us being a uh, new organization. They were able to help us. Not only did they help us get the message out when we have over 500 families come out and be supported, they came out as well live and was able to assist us. Um, it really bothers me as a taxpayer that's been a business owner for over 23 years in, in Pinellas County that funding will be taken and snatched from them for whatever reason um, that has been taken place of. I, I'm not certain of, but just to hear about this Sunday, I wanted to speak today that I am a taxpayer. I am a, a citizen of the St. St. City of St. Petersburg. I do a lot in our community. And to be a part of this organization is important. And to see the funding being given back to them, $36,000, as we all know, is not a lot of money. But it's a great help that can assist and aid the community and the resources. But I ask that you will take this opportunity to reconsider your situation for whatever reason and give the funding back because <coughs> it's needed. Thank you for this opportunity to speak, and I appreciate it. Thank you, Ms. Mackey. How about Sandra Forrest? Yes, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, Ms. Forrest. Go ahead. You're recognized. Thank you. I, I'm, I'm here. I'm, my name's Sandra. I live on 31st Avenue North in St. Pete, and I'm here to call for the return of the funding that you voted to take away from WBPU, Black Community Radio in South St. Pete. I've been supporting Black Power 96 Radio since its launch in 2017, and I'm honored to have brought my background in radio to contribute to this wonderful community station. 
WBPU's programming is produced by and for the Black community, and it reaches over 100,000 residents in South St. Pete, which is Pinellas County's most concentrated historically Black community, which has experienced disproportionately negative impacts from the COVID pandemic. I'm a retired radio engineer, and in Black Power 96's first year, St. Pete was hit by Hurricane Irma that knocked out power to half of Florida. And by some miracle, the radio station was able to stay on the air. I spent the night in the studio and ran the board while another volunteer stayed on the mic giving up to minute reports. So as the hurricane bore down, it was impossible to find neighborhood level information online or through the major news stations about shelters, transportation, or the availability of food and supplies. Uh, the radio station calls from listeners who were inside of the local shelters updating us on when the shelter will close and what people should bring with them. And we were able to communicate that on the air and save lives. So this is an emergency communication service that only a neighborhood station can, can provide. I, I want to say, you know, career politicians have their own prejudices and their track record. And Commissioner Renee Flowers was a member of the St. Pete City Council at a time when APEDF applied to purchase lots across the street from the Uhura House for expansion of community programs. She voted to block the vote when the majority of council members expressed unity with this proposal, saying that she wanted that parcel of land for a pet project she had to build low-income housing. Where is that housing now? The lot remains empty. The property is not in the hands of the surrounding black community. Revoking a grant after it had already been rewarded and behind closed doors is outrageous, won't be tolerated. This must be restored. You know, many black families in South St. Pete don't have internet in the home or own a computer, so they're heavily reliant on radio as a primary source of news, information, and culture. Throughout the COVID pandemic, WBPU has provided timely and reliable information on public safety protocols, testing, vaccine availability, along with educational programs to help community members build healthy lifestyles and strong immune systems. Only 21% of residents of the black community served by WBPU have earned a college degree compared with 44% of white St. Pete residents. WBPU provides free job training, internships, and paid employment to local residents. This is economic development. So the funding that was approved by the Pinellas County Commission in November was set to pay for a new FM transmitter, emergency alert system, broadcast mixing board, talk show system, a mobile DJ kit, as was just spoken about for the community events. And all of this with accessibility features to empower the station's blind manager who you've just met. The singling out of Black Community Radio and take back of funds that thank have already you, Thank you, Ms. Forrest. We appreciate yeah. you being with us, but your time is up. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes public comment, ma'am.